Hey, what's up, JD Elliott? Look, let me clear something up real quick. I've got some allergy problems, so if my eyes start watering, it's not gonna be because I'm getting sad because my favorite headphones are losing this competition right here. It's literally because I have bad allergies, and it might just strike during this video. But nonetheless, let's get this showdown started. Let's do it. In my left hand, we have the Jabra Elite 85H, and in my right hand, we have the Sony WH-1000MX3s. We're about to go head to head and see which headphone is going to be the best of 2019. Now, Sony has not released a 2019 headphone. This is actually from 2018. So we don't know what Sony has in store, but this is Jabra's first entry into the elite headphone space as far as like noise canceling and stuff like that. So we're gonna see, you know, how this thing pans out. So let's put these headphones down and talk about them real quick. First, we gotta talk about the price. At the time of this video, these are $300. That's right, 300. Okay, 299 for all you people who love specifics. Now on the right hand side, we have the Sonys, which are still at 350 and they really don't discount these things much. Every once in a while you can find them for about $300, but typically they are retail price, $349.99. All right, so $50 more, that means Sony actually loses the price competition, but they do make you feel good about spending that extra bread and some of the features that they add. But before we get into those features, we gotta talk about the build quality. Now the Sony headphones, nobody has really ever praised them about having great build quality. They are lightweight and they are very comfortable, but some people have complained about uh, the, uh, the arms breaking right here at the hinges and stuff like that. I haven't had that problem. It doesn't even feel like they're going to break anytime soon. They do feel like a really nicely uh, built pair of headphones that won't break, but they are made out of like 100% plastic and they feel so light that it almost feels like you could break them if you, if you, uh, you know, had a mistake or two. But the fit and finish on these things is really well done and I don't have any complaints except for how they make my head look. It gives me that kind of egghead look and I'm not a fan of that, but I've digress. Anyways, this is the part of the competition where Jabra literally destroys Sony in this competition because as soon as you pick them up, you feel a little bit more heft. Yes, they do weigh more physically, but it doesn't transfer over to the wearing and comfort. Uh, you don't feel the extra weight. It's just there when you feel it in your hands. But you also feel the build quality and the metal that they use, the materials. Um, they use a, it seems like just a harder plastic. We've got some metal right here. We got all metal hinges and stuff. Then they have much more vinyl right here, giving it a premium feel and then on the outside of the ear cups and the headband we got this i don't know if it's just it's just like this woven material man it just gives it a nice touch instead of just some plastic or maybe even some soft touch uh, plastic I, I just like the fabric it just gives it more of a luxury feel so build quality definitely hands down goes to jabra for this robust build quality they have now as far as battery life jabra kicks uh, sony's butt one more time uh, because they're giving you an extra six hours worth of battery life. We got 36 hours right here and 30 hours right here. Now they both do have quick charge and they quick charge via USB-C. Now this is something that, you know, usually Sony wins in because they have USB-C versus some of the other competition, but Jobber came correct with that. They decided to put USB-C in theirs. That allows that quick charge. So I'm okay with that. So that that's pretty much a tie in that department. And since we're on this side, you can definitely see that both of them still maintain the, uh, the uh, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now let's move over to the controls and features. So right here on the Jabra's, you see that little microphone right there. That is your dedicated assistant button. And then I did mention that uh, you do have your 3.5, then there's a USB-C. Um, on the other side, you have another button, which uh, is strictly for your noise canceling. You're gonna have your noise canceling on, off, and then your My Moment, which is a customized uh, moment for you, should you set it in the headphones. Now, as far as actually controlling your tracks and stuff, these two little bumps right here indicate uh, your up and down for your volume. And if you press and hold them, you'll go ahead and skip and reverse your tracks. Now this dimple in the middle, that is your answering in pause and play and pause button. Uh, being that the Sony's, let's move over to the Sony's, being that the Sony's have the swipe feature and I've got really accustomed to that, I'm a huge fan of the uh, the swiping features now. I didn't really care for it at first, but Sony's done it right and I've actually gotten used to it. And I've, I'm not gonna say I've mastered it, but I've gotten pretty good at it. So with your swipe forward and back and up and down for volume and track controls, and then you got your taps and double taps for your answering in and calls, it's just a no brainer for me on this one. It's just a more futuristic uh, kind of thing we got going here. And I just like that extra feature. 
And on the jobbers, because you're pressing on the headphones, it also kind of, you also kind of feel that pressure. I mean, it's not, it's not any, it's not like a deal breaker, but you know, it's just something that Sony thought about. Well, we're talking about comfort here with this long-term wearing. So you don't want to be pressing on the side of your head when you're uh, changing your tracks and stuff. And I just like the way Sony implemented it there. But since we got these ear cups all showing out like this, let me remind you, we got NFC right here, which we do not have in the jobbers. Now, as far as turning them on and off, I always turn my headphones on, my Sony's anyway, I always turn the Sony's on by opening up my Android phone. You gotta have an Android phone with NFC. So you just tap the side of that, it turns on the headphones and it connects. It just works. I, I don't know what else to say about that. It just works every single time. Now with the Jabra's to turn them on, you have to rotate the ear cups and then you'll see that little green light right there. That is flashing telling you that they're on and they turn blue when they're connected. So they're connected to my phone, but this is where we run into some problems. From time to time, more often than not actually, when these headphones are, I don't know if they go into like a rest state or what while they're on your head, but sometimes it disconnects from the app and the app thinks that the headphones are not connected. However, they are physically connected on Bluetooth on your phone. So it happens from time to time, more often than not, it's, it's really annoying to have to like flip these things in and out. Even though I like this feature, um, it's just kind of annoying to have to reconnect your headphones all the time. And I'll show you in just a second how that happens. But yeah, this rotating uh, ear cup feature, it's good when you like it and when you wanna do something to your headphones and they're constantly turning on and off, that's actually a bad thing. I've grown not to like it uh, just because of that. Um, but when when I want to use that feature and it's there, I really like it. It's, it's one of those things, it just depends on your mood that day, I guess. But with the Sony's, like I said, all you gotta do is tap your phone to it and the headphones turn on, you connect it and you're good to go. Now let's get into the app. Let's go ahead and turn these bad boys on. And I do think I need to wear them because they do have a built-in feature in these Jabra's where if you lay them down, it just knows that you're not listening to music. So it cuts them off maybe a second or two after you put them down. So they gotta stay on my head. Now let's get into the app. So right now it says, turn on your Jabra Elite 85. I am physically connected to Bluetooth. You see where it says Jabra Elite 85? Let me go in there. Let me make sure it's connected for real, for real. Okay, it says connected for calls and audio. So let's go back to the app. Okay, there it goes right there. Okay, so I don't know. It just does it when it, it just does what it wants. Anyways, let's just, since we're in here, let's just get into it. So right now it's set to an in private uh, moment. That's what Jabra is calling these special modes. So let's go into my moment. You have these custom, uh-oh. See, there it is again. It just disconnected. It disconnected from the app, but we are connected in the headphones. So let me play some music just to make sure. Okay. But it says, let me pause it, but it says I'm not connected. So I might not even be able to run through this app because it keeps crashing on me, man. <laughs> I mean, how do you, come on, man. Y'all got to, y'all, Jabra is trolling me right now. Let me just disconnect and then I will connect again. Jabra. I'm glad this happened during this video. Okay. All right, let me, it's still struggling. Hold on. All right. So let's turn the headphones off and then we will turn them on. They're on. It says the battery's medium, connected, and I got nothing with this app. Oh man, I might not be able to show y'all this app because it keeps jacking up. I don't, I don't know what the deal is with the app. It's a really great app when it's working. It has customizable moments to where when you put it on the uh, the smart sound feature that it has, I, I'm sure I got the branding wrong. It's got all these microphones built in to where it monitors the sound around you and it just figures it out for you what type of sound you need as far as your noise canceling is concerned and it takes you into that moment. Now you can customize uh, whether you're in public or what kind of EQ you have and all the other features that are uh, on or off. Uh, if you're in public or in private and stuff like that, I really wish I could show you, but this app is not working and I'm glad it happened here because, you know, some people say it'll probably work great. And then some people will say it is not that good. Like I'm saying right now, like I am straight up connected. It says waiting for job or device. Okay. Here it is. We're in my moment. Okay. So this is my moment that I've created for myself. So this, we're in here through right now. And uh, I can go in and customize this EQ. So let me just bring up the treble just a little bit. 
and it has uh, music presets and stuff like that. And then when I go into commute, you can see the active noise cancellation is on. My music preset is here. I do not have my, uh, my EQ here, but if I want to, I can go in and edit which widgets I want to show. Let's bring in the, um, the EQ and now it's on that home screen and I'm kind of adjusting the EQ. I'm taking out the bass and everything just so you can see that, okay, now I'm in public. And so it has hear through because if I'm in public, I want to, um, I want to hear my surroundings. So every time it automatically switches to whichever mode you're in, uh, when it does the smart sound, it, it remembers all this stuff. So there's my bass uh, being turned down on my commute. And there's my my moment with here through and the treble turned up. So it remembers all this stuff. That's awesome. All right. So it does a lot more other stuff. So the app is really robust. The problem is the connectivity with the app and the um, and the phone. Let me check for a firmware update. Well, it says it's up to date. So hopefully Jabra, if you're watching this video, if you're listening, push an update out to this thing. I know that's more of a software problem than anything else. So just push an update to this thing and you'll be good to go. And trust me, guys, this app is it's, it's an awesome app. OK. So let me take these off and then we'll go into the Sony app. I don't need to put the headphones on. And that's one of the features that I wish uh, Sony would steal from Jabra. or maybe in the next edition is where it has sensors in here to sense whether you have the headphones on your head or off. That way they can just kind of turn off and on and go into standby mode. All you got to do for the Sony's though is unlock your phone and then tap that NFC side right there and everything just turns on. They're on and they are connected. So Sony's app is definitely not as aesthetically pleasing as the Jabra app, but you got everything you need here. You got adaptive sound. Sony will detect the same thing, whether you're walking or commuting or something like that. The headphones will automatically read your outside noises and then just adjust the headphones as far as the uh, the noise canceling to whatever you need at that moment or whatever it thinks you need. It's funny how ignorance is bliss. It wasn't until I saw the Jabra app to where I realized like, wow, this thing is missing some stuff. So you can't really customize the sound signature of your headphones in each um, setting you have. Like with walking, yes, I can uh, have my ambient sound turned up or down and I can focus on voice and stuff like that. It actually remembers that stuff. But what about, you know, the, the sound quality, like the EQ modes and stuff like that. I really like how Jabra implemented that. So inside of the app, Jabra definitely wins on that side. Let me hit cancel because I don't really want to change anything. But Sony does have this noise canceling optimizer where these little robots they go in your ears and they figure out the atmospheric pressure and it just optimizes it so you don't feel cabin pressure or anything crazy like that i've literally been on the plane before i optimized the sound and it just it just works out the pressure and it, it makes you feel better it doesn't give you that vertigo feeling that you get when you're on a plane uh you do have some other stuff like you know sound position control and stuff like that my favorite part of the sony headphones is the sound uh, surround vpt i love of listening to my music in arena and club. Some people hate it, I love that stuff. You got a pretty elaborate EQ here with custom modes and there's also some presets in there. I wish they would work that into the adaptive sound control, that would be great. Then you got some player controls right there and you can go into all your other stuff and program your, your assistant button and stuff like that. So that's kind of nice to have. As far as apps go, I'm gonna go ahead and call it a tie because one has pros where the other one has cons and then vice versa. Uh, there's elements of both of them that I really like. Jabra's really taking an L right now because the app is wishy-washy. <laughs> At least the Sony connects every single time. Anyways, let's move on to the most important thing about buying headphones. What do these bad boys sound like? All right, so let's get into the ear cups because that's an important thing when it comes to sound. These are almost identical ear cups, which actually provides a nice enclosed sound. It really does separate you from your environment. But when it comes to sound, yeah, Jabra does a great job, man. These sound really good. They have a nice amount of bass. The clarity is there. The mid range is there. It has all the elements that make a great sounding headphone. However, I really do enjoy listening to the Sony headphones because inside of that app, not only do they have the uh, the dedicated EQ that you can manipulate, but they have those sound alive modes, the different modes like concert, arena, and so forth. And then you can adjust your EQ inside of that as well. And then you can add a little bit more bass with their clear bass. So as far as bass goes in these things, these things can hit some really nice lows. Man, they hit really nice lows. As far as highs, they do get up there to the ear piercing highs. It's just a matter of how you EQ your headphones, but they give you the opportunity in here and if you like a huge sound stage uh, with your music then the Sony's can definitely do it for you where you just cannot achieve that in the job or headphones it's, it's just not happening but Sony gives you that opportunity and that's something I personally like is having a huge sound stage 
So when it comes to sound, I really can't recommend one over the other because they both do a good job at what they're supposed to do. However, my personal preference is the Sony's because of the dedicated app and how well it responds to it with all the different sound stages you can have and everything else. But overall, for the headphones you're purchasing, right here you're spending 300 bucks, right here you're spending 350. I do think you get that extra $50 in technology uh, when it comes to the Sony. So it's not like they just charge you an extra $50 for nothing. I do believe you get that quality here as far as you know the features and stuff that it comes with, like the NFC and the swiping functionality. Um, so both of them are well worth the money that they're charging and I don't think you can go wrong either way. I'm definitely not trying to sway you one way or the other. I just wanted to point out a few key features that I thought would stand out and help you make your decision if you were trying to decide between the two. However, Jabra is only releasing these headphones. Like this is Jabra's baby boy for 2019. We still don't know if Sony's coming out with an XM4. Personally, I wouldn't mind it if they did not come out with an XM4 because these are good for the year of 2019. But if they do, you can expect them to be much better and you can definitely expect them to outshine the Jabra's because that's kind of what Sony does when they make their noise canceling headphones. <laughs> Anyways, I ain't no expert in this kind of stuff, but I do need you to do a couple of things for me, man. Look, hashtag new stuff in the comment section and don't forget to throw those hands up if you had a good time checking these out with me. See y'all at the next one. All right, apparently you had a good time watching this video. Well, today is your lucky day because I didn't already made a whole bunch of them for you to go back and binge watch. But if you just want to check out the new stuff, you make sure you smash on that subscribe button and tap that little bell. That way you'll know when it's time to come back and open up some new stuff.